Hello everyone, my name is Scalty, and today I'm bringing you a guide on the creation of Tier 1 Iron Components for all your future factory building needs. I've done a previous guide on this and Copper as the 2-in-1, but this time around we've put it into its own standalone, more permanent, long-term structure for all your future needs. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so before we get into building anything, let's go over what we're going to actually need for this factory. And on the right side you can see that we're going to need at least an MK1 miner, 4 smelters, 6 constructors, and 6 storage containers. You may or may not need an additional MK1 miner or 3, depending on the node purity you have available. You just want to make sure that you have 120 iron ore coming into the system. Additionally, the minimum power draw will be 45 megawatts with a maximum power draw of 60 megawatts should you need more MK1 miners. Additionally for the build you're going to want MK2 belts which uses reinforced iron plates. I do have a reinforced iron plate guide available to create those should you have access to the assemblers already. If not you can create them by hand inside of the hub. And you're going to want those for at least coming off of your pure node so that way you can transfer the 120 iron ore per minute nicely. So let's go ahead and get started. So we can see that we have a 5x7 foundation area with a 3x3 three three white foundation area highlighted here in the center. And this is where the footprint of the first floor is going to be located. Additionally for the stylistic purposes if you can manage it I would recommend having your input coming in on the long edge like we have here. And also note that we do have our input coming in below the ground floor, and that's to keep the walkable area nice and clean. So what we're going to want to do with these six white foundations here is we want to take our storage containers, and we want these on the ground floor so that way we can easily access the basic components being constructed. And when placing these, you can see the white hitbox around this object, and you want this not here, where you can see that it's just up against the edge of the foundation. You want to move it in one. And this way when we build the walls, like so, they don't have a collision error and can actually build them. And then on top of that, you want to go ahead and build three more. And this will be the input from our constructors up above. And then on the back here, let's go ahead and build out three additional storage containers. And you want to make sure that these are facing the opposite direction of the container below, because what we're going to do is we're going to connect these with lifts, so that way items from the top container get transferred into the bottom, and we have regular access from the front like so. But what we want to do is go ahead and get these connected up with some MK1 belts. And what's nice about this system is that once these containers receive items, they'll put them out onto this belt, like so, and we can see what is actually inside of this container. So we have that done. We can go ahead and enclose these with more walls and get these all hidden away. And should you want access to this area, on this one, on this foundation area here, and this one here, you can build out the walls with the doors in them. And then for everything else, you can go ahead and just do a normal wall. And, should you choose, we have our input coming from down below, and it's going to go up this foundation to our second floor. And for an, a neat little stylistic aesthetic, I'm going to put a window here, close this off, like so. Oops. This way you can see the iron ore coming into the system. And if you do want to use the window, I would just suggest that you go and place walls in here, like so. So that way it looks finished from the outside perspectives. So let's go ahead and get our second floor started, and this is where we're going to be building a sandwich layer, and by that, 
I mean to take a an 8x4 foundation where the bottom is on the top part of these walls here and then next to it take an 8x1 foundation and build it four times next to the 8x4 giving us a matching height and then we can go ahead and delete the middle two in the original 8x4 and that gives us the top part of our sandwich and the bottom part of our sandwich. And then from here, we can go ahead and build this out into a 3x3 space, but do not cover this column here. That's where our belts are going to be going for the input into this factory. Then the top part of the sandwich, we can cover up entirely like so. Just to give you a quick overview of what we have complete so far. Actually, let's go ahead and close up this side as well. that and then for the input into the factory to maintain a clean presentation I'll go ahead and take a single wall conveyor and put it on the opposite side of our input so this would be the opposite here single wall conveyor here we do a regular wall on this side regular wall on that side and then before we close this off let's go ahead and get our input complete so let's go ahead and bring in our ore. We'll go ahead and bring this up and get this connected like so. Now we can go ahead and close this area off and then from here we can just enclose this space but before we do that we want to make sure that we have our smelters designated and so we only need four for the system so we're going to put it on these four corners here and what we want to do is we want them facing inward from the short side of the factory like so and then we want to just take our walls Make sure you use a wall conveyor underneath the smelters, like so. And then the rest can just be normal walls. Leave one open, so that way we can go in and do our belt work. So we have the 120 ore coming up, and we want to split that into two lines of 60 and then into four total lines of 30. And I apologize, but what we want to do first is actually go ahead and take our lifts and get these in place. So that way when we connect the belts on the inside, we'll do it without issue. like so. And when you're doing belt work inside of a tight space like this, tight vertical space where we don't have a lot of clearance, I would recommend building your way out so you do the furthest inputs first from our entrance. So this would be our entrance and we started with the belt work over here. So that way as we build our way out we don't need to worry about slotting under anything or jumping over anything and we can easily exit from the middle of our sandwich. So now we have our smelters in place and now what we want to do is bring these all into a central column here in this foundation. And so what we can do is just take mergers in front of both of these and bring them together like so. And then this middle column here, based on where we have the mergers, we take a single wall conveyor, put them next to each one, and then normal walls here. And then we are ready to pipe this up to our next floor. So what we want to do is bring these walls up one, two, three times.
And again, similar to what we did here with the window, you can replace, say, these bottom walls here and put in your glass walls so that way you can see the iron ingots coming in and up and just give it a little bit more of a dynamic look because you have some more motion in the scene. Whoops. There we go. And then similar to what we did for our smelters here, we're going to do another sandwich layer. So go ahead and take our foundation. Oop, that went down in the water. I'll clean that up later. Leave a gap here for our belts coming up. And what we actually want to do here is not just do a 3x3, but we want to do a 5x3. So you can see that we have a foundation border at this point all the way around. We'll build it up just like so. We have our sandwich layer complete. So for the placement of our constructors on this floor here, I'm going to refer to this portion as the front, and that's where our storage containers are located. And then this will be the back, which is where we have the input of the ore coming into our factory. So on these back five foundations is where we're going to be placing our constructors. And so below them, we want to put our conveyor walls in place. Let's go ahead and place the constructors as well. And we want these, like our smelters below, hanging off by just a little bit. So that way when we connect them with our lifts, they just snap nice and cleanly. And then this center foundation, if you have built it, go ahead and get rid of it, unfortunately. So what we're going to do here actually is bring up our inputs and that is the ironing gets from below so above the conveyor wall just do a conveyor wall on both sides and then we can just do normal walls over here and then bring up the iron ingots like so and then we can go ahead and close this back up so that way when we look up from this perspective here everything is nice and cleaned up and it looks more polished. Now for the load balancing of our constructors, we have an input over here, or I'm sorry, an output over there and an output over here. So what we want to do is we need 30, 30, 30, 15, and 15. So for the left two conveyor walls, we want to take the closest output of the iron ingots and bring this over and we want a splitter here and I would suggest not bringing it past the center point of the foundation so we want this gap right here any closer and we're going to get an invalid shape for the conveyor belt go ahead and just bring this over like so if you want to do the 90 degrees by all means feel free but this is all going to be hidden away so it can be as spaghetti as you so choose. So then we need 30 here, 15, and 15. So for this output coming up, we want to go ahead and put our splitter here. But then in front of it, we want to put another splitter. So we're going to go ahead and take this line coming up and into the splitter. And then going in over here real quick. So we have this splitting off into this splitter and then we want this line coming out for our other 30. So we have 60 into 30 and 30 and then we take 30 going into this splitter and split it out into 15 and 15 like so. And then with that we can go ahead and get the rest of this sandwich layer closed off.
So these left three constructors will be making our iron plates. These two over here on the right will be making our iron rods. So on the left constructor making our iron rods, or the second from the right, we want to go ahead and place an additional constructor in front of it on the furthest foundation away. And this will be the one making our iron screws. And you can see now how this lines up with our input down below. And so for this, we want to do some load balancing. So in front of that constructor, what we want to take is a splitter and then a merger in between both of these. Let's make sure it's going in the right direction. And then in front of the far right constructor, we're going to go ahead and place a merger as well. So what we want here is we want to take the three outputs from the splitter. So we have one, two, and three, looping back into the merger. So we have 15 iron rods coming out of this constructor. So we have five going here, five here. So it's giving us 10 iron rods on this belt here into the constructor. So it's 10 rods in for 40 screws per minute. And then we have the five merging in with the output of this constructor giving us 20 rods per minute. Now in this one here, we wanna go ahead and take a lift and change the top to go over towards the center. And then to receive that, we want to take a conveyor pole and in line with that lift and centered with this constructor here, move it over once, twice on the edges of these two foundations. And then go ahead and take a belt off of it toward the edge here. And now you can see that's in line with that input below. And now that we have this belt going in this direction, when we build this lift here, the input will be on the top rather than the bottom and now we can go ahead and connect this together and that's the complex part and now for these we just want to go ahead and take a merger pointing toward the long edge over here bring all of these together and running these off to their edge like so and now all we need to do is just take our lifts and bring them down like so. And so now we have our iron plates, iron rods, and our screws. Now if you do want to change up the outputs from here, if you just want iron plates and iron rods, you can go ahead and just not build this constructor and just have these two constructors merged into a single line coming down like so. This middle one can be empty, you can do with it what you so choose. If you do not want any screws being produced. But these screws will be beneficial to early game players for any kind of hub upgrades and unlocks that are available to them. But with that, that's essentially build complete. All we need to do is go ahead and run power to everything, get some walls, and make this a truly polished and finished up build. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'll see you on the other side. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found some value in this tutorial. If you did, the power draw for this pack, for this, <sighs> we're going to need one MK1 miner on a pure node, or two MK1 miners on two normal nodes, or four MK1 miners on four, um, impure node, and there, and then a normal wall, and then looking through here, put in an additional normal wall. But then we won't have access to get down there. So, so now we have 30 in this splitter. We'll bring it out. Oh no. 
Oh no. So in front of this split slash merger here, we can go ahead and build our next constructor. Whoops. Now we can do a splitter. Is bring a lift up, facing it over to the left, and then to receive it, what we're going to want to do is take a conveyor pole. So we have this in line, you can see this green snapping line, bringing over one step, two step, and three step. Nope, just two. Alright, for real this time, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some value in this tutorial and you enjoyed those outtakes there at the end. I thought it'd be pretty entertaining and funny to show some outtakes and into what all went into recording this for you guys. If you want to see more content in the future, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or if there's something you want to see specifically in the future, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. I love putting these together for you guys. So any feedback you offer, I take to heart. So also, I guess actually, yeah, if you guys uh, take these builds and you tweak them after building them and put them into your world, I'd love to see them. Go ahead and send them to me on Twitter or Instagram. I'd love to take a look. So with that, thank you for watching. Take care.